G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about how to select a hydraulic oil for your application. So, one of the easiest ways to think of um, all the different hydraulic oils is in the way that formulators think of them when they formulate the different products. One of the, well, two of the major ways that they do that is to look at two of the um, formulation dimensions, which would be the quantity of zinc in the formulation, as well as the viscosity index. Rather than putting them on a continuum, I'm going to make this simple and divide it into kind of four quadrants. So we've got standard VI and high VI on the x-axis and zinc-based anti-wear packages versus zinc-free anti-wear packages. So this will give us a bit of a framework to talk about uh, the different options. As you travel from the bottom left to the bottom right, the formulation gets a lot more difficult um, to achieve some of the OEM requirements. So you can imagine once you can't use zinc-based anti-wear additives, you've got to look to other alternatives. Um, these are often more expensive, but it also makes it more difficult to meet the criteria of, let's say, the Bosch Rexroth test. So, Question one, why do you need to go with a high viscosity index hydraulic oil? Uh, two cases in which you would do that. Firstly would be if you're operating under a wide ambient temperature range. Um, so I see this a lot in the wind industry, for example, um, where some of the more remote locations in the middle of winter, they can get to you know, minus 30, minus 40 degrees Celsius. And in summer, it might be in the 30, 40, 50 degrees Celsius. Um, so that wide ambient temperature range means that on startup, you need a really wide, um, and oh, sorry, a high VI to be able to cope with those conditions. The other one is a wide operating temperature range. So if you have um, something which is going to start relatively cold, but obviously um, work at a reasonably high temperature, then you need, again, something with a, a decent amount of VI in, in it so that the viscosity is not going to change dramatically over time. I've put this chart up a couple of times, and basically if we were to go to a higher viscosity index, uh, your viscosity at 40 degrees Celsius is the same, but it would maintain more viscosity at a higher temperature. And that would be you know, desirable. Particularly, we see wide operating temperature ranges. Um, in the hydraulic space, it's now all about... Um, reducing the size of the hydraulic pack. So as you reduce the size but put more power through the pack, that's going to mean more heat. Um, and that's just part and parcel of the designing of the system. So as all the hydraulic packs get smaller and smaller, we tend to see higher temperatures, and that's really driving um, a lot of um, you know, lubricants to go to a high viscosity index. Now, why would you go for a zinc-free hydraulic oil? So zinc-based ones tend to be the cheaper ones. So it's really, why would you go the extra step and, and uh, select a more expensive hydraulic oil? First would be if you have aquatic toxicity requirements. So um, if you're working over water, for example, or in and around water sources, uh, this might be a desirable trait. So if you're working anywhere near, let's say, a harbor, um, or if you're working in the hydro industry, so um, around hydro turbines, um, hydraulic oils up and often operate the gates there. Um, Zinc-free also helps you with keep clean performance. So um, one thing that's probably worth uh, noting is that sludge in hydraulic systems is the, the most common component of that sludge is actually broken down ZDDP additive. Um, so after it's performed its function, it, it goes to sludge quite easily. Um, so having a zinc-free formulation really helps you with keep clean performance. Now, the detergent is also going to do some of that work, but not having zinc in the initial formulation is really going to assist the lubricant in uh, maintaining that clean performance. If you've got close tolerance components like servo valves, um, then obviously having any kind of varnish or sludge in the system is going to make them prone to sticking. So again, that, that's a, a driver to go zinc-free. And if you have high temperature operations, the reason we say this is because um, the ZDDP additive, it breaks down 
it's a it's a thermal degradation mechanism which causes ZDDP to break down. So once you go kind of into that 100 degrees Celsius range, probably really anything more than about 80, um, ZDDP starts to break down and go to sludge. So again, if you're having those high temperature operations, um, you really want to start looking at zinc-free alternatives. And that really means mobile equipment. So um, zinc-free is often a recommendation when we go to mobile equipment, simply because a lot of the mobile equipment OEMs are putting more power through smaller hydraulic packs. As a consequence of that, you're getting higher temperature and therefore it drives a need to go to a zinc-free package. So really those last four points are kind of linked. Um, mobile equipment is going to mean higher temperature, close tolerance components, and a need um, to, to keep the system clean. So if you were to look at this matrix, um, I guess what you could probably say is that where you would probably use a standard VI zinc-based product, so that's the cheapest out of the, all the alternatives, is in systems where you have high losses, so maybe you haven't got a handle on leaking hoses and things like that, um, but you can afford to lose a lot of hydraulic oil, so you use it as a consumable, um, then you just need a cheap hydraulic oil. If you've got really large oil reservoirs, so the oil's not really working that hard, and if you see mild temperatures, this is a really good reason to go with a, you know, a cheap, bog-standard um, conventional hydraulic oil. Where you might need something with a bit more VI is really kind of typical industrial plant uses. Um, it might see a wide operating temperature range, um, but there isn't really a strong driver to go to zinc free uh, because you can afford a much larger oil reservoir um, and there's no, there's no real concerns about it getting to 80 to 90 degrees. It probably operates around, let's say, 60. All right, so as you start to move up the chain, uh, zinc-free with a standard VI, um, you're probably just using this for uh, the low toxicity requirement. So maybe you work um, over a water source, right, and you need that uh, zinc-free requirement. And finally, zinc-free and high viscosity index, that's when you might need something with a low toxicity, but it's not essential. Um, where you're going to be either in uh, ambient temperatures that have a very wide range or operating temperatures that are, you know, have a wide range or at the top end of the range, um, you have a need to keep it clean or you have mobile equipment, which sort of encompasses all of that. So there are other considerations, obviously. We're not just talking about whether a, a hydraulic oil has zinc or not and whether it has a uh, a high or standard viscosity index. Some of the other things to maybe look at on the product data sheet would be things like um, the tapered roller bearing viscosity loss test. This is actually one which is, uh, I believe it's Kluber that, that started this test, and it looks at the shear stability um, of a hydraulic oil. So it's easy to cheat uh, viscosity index, I guess, by putting in a lot of VI improvers. But VI improvers tend to shear down over time. So you want to ensure that um, your uh, VI is going to stay high for the long run. And this will give you an indication of that. Copper strip corrosion test. Um, so this is one where the, the lubricant um, will be subjected to a copper strip. And depending on the results at the end of the test, um, they'll give you a score based on this rating. Um, that can be, in particular, very useful if you have a lot of copper in your system. So either copper in your bearings in the hydraulic pack, um, or maybe uh, you have copper oil coolers. Um, this is a, a really handy uh, test to have on file. Uh, number three, hydraulic efficiency. So the hydraulic efficiency of different hydraulic oils varies greatly, um, predominantly down to the quality of the base stock and its interaction with the seals. So you want to check, um, often they'll do comparisons of hydraulic efficiency with, let's say, quote-unquote, competitor lubricants. Um, it's worth checking um, that. And if you can, measuring it on, on site. There's also the FZG test. So uh, this is a scuffing test, which is focused on the performance of uh, gear teeth. Um, but in a lot of hydraulic packs, um, 
you, you may you may actually be using hydraulic oils in geared applications. So in that case, um, you might want to take a look at the FCG rating. Um, foam sequence is going to give you uh, an indication of its ability to release foam. So in particular, if you have a very small oil reservoir, um, its, a, its ability to get rid of that entrained air is going to be very important to prevent cavitation. Uh, and finally, you've got OEM testing. So your um, hydraulic OEM may have a very specific set of tests. Um, but it's also worth just looking at some of the other OEM approvals that uh, the hydraulic oil may have achieved. So I'm showing some pictures, for example, of equipment that has gone through the Bosch Rexroth test, which is sort of the gold standard when it comes to um, different OEM testing. It's probably the one that works the oil the hardest. Now, this one is a really interesting one because uh, it has a really strong focus on uh, wear protection of a vein pump and as a result it's extremely difficult for OE, uh, for lubricant manufacturers to achieve um, a passing grade in this test without zinc in their formulation i think there's only a couple of hydraulic oils that have done it to date so this is something that looks like it's passed the test and just to give you an idea this is what the equipment would look like when it fails the test um, so it's a it's a really good if you like, litmus test of the, the quality of the lubricant. So all these other considerations are, are really up to your application. So you definitely consider these, um, but place it, you know, is that going to be relevant for my application? Because um, you don't obviously don't want to be spending any more than you have to. All right, I hope that's been uh, helpful for you. Um, as always, if you've got questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. This has been Lubrication Explained.